What's up everybody? Welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skidvis. Today I'm going to show you how to set up some quick and easy AI patrols in Unity 3D. But first, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new stuff. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in a brand new Unity project. We're going to do a little bit of setup before we get into the code. So we'll just go ahead and create a plane. We are ground. Uh, we want to put a tag on it. That's the only requirement for this. So we'll go ahead and add a tag called ground. And set that to ground. Um, I brought in some materials, or one material, just to make it green. Uh, nothing fancy, it just makes the ground green so that it's easier to see. And now we can go ahead and create our script. We'll call it patrol. And open that in our editor of choice. We're going to need a few variables. We will create a serialized field that will be a float called speed. This is how fast our patrols are going to move. We will default that at 10 for now. We'll do another one and we will call this one wait time. And this is how long it's going to take for our patrol to wait between patrols. Let's see what I'm talking about here in a second. The next thing we're gonna want is a, another float, but this one's not gonna be publicly accessible. It's called current wait time. And this is going to be basically how long our guard has been waiting. Now we're going to need four more variables and I will type those out first and then explain what they are. Okay, so these are going to be basically our dimensions for the ground. Basically how, what's the lowest X for it, maximum X boundary, the minimum Z boundary, and the maximum Z boundary. And I'll explain that more in a little bit. The next thing we're going to need is a vector 3 called move spot. And that's basically going to be where is the guard going to move to next. Now we're going to need some methods. So I'll go ahead and punch those up down here and explain what they do afterwards. Okay, in this method, get ground size, we're going to go ahead and find the object by its tag that is marked as the ground and assign it to the ground variable. And then we're going to find its renderer because the renderer contains the size and dimensions of our object and its position in the world space. So then we're going to do some math. We're going to assign its minimum x to its center minus half its width. We're going to assign its maximum x to its center plus its plus half its width. And then we're going to do the same for its depth. We're also going to need a method to get our position, our new position. So we'll go ahead and create that real quick. All right, let's break this one down. This one's pretty simple. It will return a vector three. Methods called get new position. And so then in here, we'll create a random variable uh, that gets a random number from our minimum x to our maximum x. That's going to pick a random number out of our x axes. Then we do the same for the z axis. So we will create a variable called random z, which gets a random number from the minimum z axis to the maximum z axis. And then we will go ahead and create a new vector three that has that random X, our current Y position, because we're not interested in changing that at the moment, and our random Z position. Uh, and then we return that. And then we'll want to create the method that actually does the movement. So we'll go ahead and punch that up real quick and come back to that. 
All right, this new method, we're calling it get to step in. And what it does is it takes our position and it moves it towards the move spot. So it takes our current position and our target position and then the speed at which we want to get there. So we are moving our move spot vector three as our target and our speed times time dot delta time. That's going to get us moving in that direction. The next thing we have is an if statement to see if we're at that direction. So it's going to check the vector three distance and that's going to compare the distance between our current position and our target and it's going to see if we're close to it right because we can't actually get like right on it um, but if we're really really close 0.2 then it's going to enter this if statement it's going to see if we are currently waiting if we're not currently waiting then we're going to change our move spot variable and get a new position so that's going to tell us where we're going to move to next and then we're going to set our wait time to be whatever we decided, which was three in the beginning of this code. Um, otherwise, if we are waiting, then we're going to subtract time dot delta time so that we can count down our wait timer. Now we're almost done. I need one more method just to pretty things up. So I'll go ahead and punch that up and we'll come back to that as well. This next method is a void, it's called watch your step. And this is actually just going to rotate us in the direction that we're going to move in. So we're gonna need a vector three that is gonna be our target direction. And the way we get that is by subtracting our current position from where we wanna go, our move spot. And then next to the line here, we're gonna create another vector three called new direction. And it's going to use vector three's rotate towards method uh, we pass it our current forward direction as well as our target direction. And then we pass it a couple more parameters. This one here is important. Uh, the 0.3 is the rate at which you turn. If you set this to a one, you will turn instantly. And if you set it to anything less than that, then that divides how slowly. So if you set it to like 0.1, it'll turn really slow. Uh, so I find 0.3 to be pretty, pretty nice. Um, our next one will actually do the rotation. So we set our transform rotation to a quaternion look rotation and we pass it our new direction. Now that we have all this set up, we can actually start calling these things. So we will go back up to the top and we will punch into our start. We want to do a couple things first, right? We want to pick up our ground, our ground size. So we get ground size. So this is going to initialize um, our ground size and get all that information set up. It's only going to happen once at the beginning of the running the scene. Um, the next thing we'll want to do is in our update, we want to do two things. We want to um, get our character to look in the right direction. So we will watch your step. And then we also want to get our character to move in, so we get to step in. And last but not least, we want to make sure to update our move spot at the beginning as well. So we will get our new position in the beginning here when we start so that our character has some place to move as soon as we start playing. That's all there is. Just 69 lines of code. We'll go ahead and save that. Go back into Unity. And then we can drop in whatever we want here. So I'm just going to drop in an empty cube, move it up a little bit, and attach our patrol script to it. Patrol. And as you can see, there's our initial speed and our wait time. And if we go ahead and start this, it should all work great. You'll see him go from edge to edge. He'll wait his three seconds and then move to the next position. Move to the next position. Just like that. Now we're gonna we're gonna change our camera to match our current view so that it's easier to see. And uh, I picked up these cool little ghosts from Mario on Sketchfab, link in the descriptions. I'll just bring that in. Ooh, that's kind of big. So we will shrink that down a little bit. 
and I'll go ahead and delete that cube and attach the script to this guy. And just to make things interesting, I will duplicate this guy a couple times. There we go. And now when we run this, those three ghosts should start looking around for a place to go. Now the beauty of this is that I can go ahead and um, just I can adjust this surface here. I can if I move the surface first of all, then they will follow it. It will go to wherever it is. See that? But also, if I uh, make it different dimensions, if I go ahead and make it longer, then they will stick to its dimensions just run up and down this little sidewalk and uh, not fall off. Same with its width. I change it this way. And there you have it. Quick and easy like I said. If you found this useful, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. If you'd like access to the source code, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber where you can access source code and other cool content. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Skidvis. Peace out.